This is a little explanation on how to look at proteins using the protein data bank. The first way is to start with your, your browser search engine. Let's type in PDB and the name of one of the proteins we want to look at. Let's try Rubisco. And this gives you a link, comes at the top of the list usually. And it takes you to the protein data bank, which is a database of all the known protein structures. And here we can see quite a large protein, but you can't do anything with it. To move on to a more dynamic structural view, click on the tab structure at the top, this tab, and it will give you a three dimensional view here. And what's really nice about, about this view, you can see the you can see the protein. You can move the protein around and have a look at the bits. The little pink dots represent water molecules. We can remove the water molecules if we want, just by clicking this um, the, the components, clicking little I. And, and then at the top, <coughs> if you want to look at the sequence of amino acids in the chain, you can hover over any of these letter, all the single letter codes for the amino acids, and it highlights that amino acid in the structure you can see below. So you can move this around, have a little look at it at 3D, um, another nice thing you could do is to zoom in on particular parts of, of the structure. You could use the wheel on your mouse to scroll in and out, or if you press control, you can use the mouse to move up and down so you can see different views. And if you click on the background, you can pull the model forwards and back. So by clicking on the background with the left click, scrolling the wheel of the mouse, or control and click, and then try to move like this see some of the side chains here on this particular, this is the backbone, the ribbon represents the backbone of, of the amino acid chain, the polypeptides, and each of these structures here is the side chain, you can see those sticking out the side. So you click back on the background, it takes you back to the original view, and if you want you can look at something else, but it's a really nice way to visualise a protein, and this is Rubisco, it's a large soluble uh, protein which binds to carbon dioxide and helps in photosynthesis inside the chloroplasts of plants. So if you want to go somewhere else, go to the search. Let's have a look at human insulin. Be careful with the search here in PDB. The beginning of the search gives you all sorts of structure keywords, but it's much better to use the structure title to do your search. So click on human insulin in the structure title. And then you click on the first structure you see. Again, we'll look at the structure. We won't worry about all the details. And what you can see here now is that much smaller protein. We, we saw these spiral structures in the previous Rubisco protein, and there were many of them, tens of them. Here we just have two. And you can see there are really just two polypeptide chains here, the green one and the red one. And the little floating orange dots are water molecules. You can remove them if you wish. We can zoom in a little bit. If we click on a part, we can have a look at the side chains. You can see this is a side chain. With a, these are hydrogen bonds. Let's click back on the background to, to go back. And you might say, well, how, how do these two things help? How, do, how are they held together? And if you click in the right place, you'll actually find it's worth trying to find this yourself. Um, there's a, a, a bond here between two cysteine amino acids, and one of them is attached to the, the, the red or brown uh, polypeptide, and the other one is attached to the green, and those two form a bond called the disulfide bridge. And you can see there's the cysteine from the, from the bridge here. If you're wondering why is there just one sequence and we've got two chains, at the top here it is possible to show both the chains at the same time, you have to scroll down to see to see both. So what's really nice there, if, if I click on the middle of this bond, you can see the two cysteines which are bound together are highlighted in both of the chains. Let's look at one more. Let's look at collagen. I'm going to do the same, scroll down to structure title. I'm going to ignore this first one because the collagen molecule uh, looks like, like this. So I'm going to click on this one. And then go to structure again. And you'll see this is a very different shape. 
we don't see any spirals in this in this molecule. Um, and in fact, there are some sort of, I suppose they're spirally in a way, these chains, but um, let me just get rid of the water. And you can see there are a few other molecules attached here. We can get rid of all of those and leave just the polymer, the polypeptide. Um, and you can see there's three polypeptide chains here. And what's interesting about these three polypeptide chains is that they are actually fastened together. You can see these blue dotted lines, which represent hydrogen bonds between the separate strands. So these three long polypeptides are actually attached together to make a single strong polypeptide, which is a structural protein used in sort of skin and ligaments. So not surprising, it's a long molecule, which is a sort of thread-like structure, fibrous protein. So there you go, a little introduction to how you can use the protein data bank. And uh, there's loads more things on here, but uh, just for looking at proteins, it's good.